Okay, I think it's working. So, so, so yesterday, or no, Thursday, not yesterday, Thursday, I was talking about sequence alignments. This is the key, that basically you want to take two sequences, two strings of text, two strings of that, and you want to find how they are related. And you want to do that to basically find homology, you want to find what sequences, one step at a time, had a common ancestor. And then we do some other things, which is really a basis for very, very much we do in biology. So even if you do new, new genome sequencing, if you want to find a mutation in a human genome, something, you need to align it. You need to find, compare something to something else. So uh, alignment, well, we can skip. So an alignment is something like this. So you have two sequences, and you have some relationship between them. And in somehow, you want to maximize the similarities between them, between the letters in the sequences. So these two, this alignment here is quite good because 10 out of 12 are identical. This is quite bad because only 4 out of 12 is identical. That's kind of in, intuition would tell you that. So this is, this is quite easy to do, but the other trick is that you can actually put in gaps. Because that's also how evolution happens. Because you really have insertions or deletions. So something is added or deleted in a sequence during evolution. So you can get gaps in one or both of the sequences. And then you can uh, change this alignment here, with the same sequences, from going from 4 to going to 11 identical positions. So most people would argue that this is a better alignment than that one. And you can find some scoring functions or some, uh, some mathematical model that, is, that tells you that it's like that. So the key question is then how do we get this alignment? How, how do we tell that this is, do we know that this is the best alignment? And yes. We do that by first we represent an alignment like a matrix. So this is uh, another way to represent the same thing. So we can take this sequence here and this sequence here and align it. And as long as you go in a diagonal, you are aligning the positions. And as long as you're going vertical or horizontal, you are making a gap in one of the positions. So everybody gets this matrix alignment? Even you. So this is really and. You can actually just make plots, and you can look at it, and you can find the angle by I and define them, and you can do that in different places. Different ways. We talked about two types of alignment. You can only either align a small part that's very similar, or try to align everything, and you may, may not find these high similarity things. So local and global alignment, or Smith Waterman and Nidma Wunsch. Let's skip this a moment. This is, we will talk more about it later. Okay, so how, here we have, uh, we, we, we all agree that this is probably a better alignment than that one, and that this one is also better than that one. So we need to find some kind of scoring function. And of course, the easiest scoring function is you just count the number of identical letters. But it's not the best scoring function. So we often we use something else that is, has a score like that. So we, have, we get a number here. So some similarities are higher than others because they are more conserved in uh, evolution. But anyway, if we have an alignment and we have a scoring function, it's very simple. We just add the scores together. Often we have a penalty for the gaps, which is some minus numbers here. And then if, if they are identical or similar amino acids or similar nucleotides, you get a positive number. If they're different, you get a negative number. So Q to A is minus 1. Uh, T, S to S is 4. So we have ways to get this scoring function. But if we have a scoring function, to score an alignment is just to add up the numbers. That's easy. You all, you all follow me? So you all know? If you, so if I, uh, on the exam I ask you, what, given this substitution matrix, this alignment, what is the score? And you can count, count it. Do you manage? It's, and basically the scores should describe the log of the probability for two alignments to be um, so, so sequences to be substituted to each other. So how likely is it that you have an alanine in one sequence and, and the other one you also have an alanine? Or you have an alanine and you have a proline. And you take a log of this likelihood. And the reason to take a log is because otherwise you have to multiply small numbers and that's going to be... It used to be cost, costly in computers. Long time ago. You looked like you didn't know how to sum up? Or? No, it's uh, because we don't know when uh, when, like, um, the alignment between 
Yeah, but it doesn't have to be like that. But, but in, 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 if you remember these matrices that actually, well, I'll show them later, is that the reason is because in, um, I mean, in evolution, some amino acids are more conserved than others. So the tryptophan is always very conserved for, because, I mean, it's hard to replace with something else. Or cysteine and disulfibrol, you're very unlikely to replace the cysteine with something else. So if you have a cysteine and, it's a, and also a, that is less likely to mutate something else than if you have an isolucine. You, isolucine can is quite easily mutate to lose it. So that's because it's, then it's more important to keep that. So it's a, yeah, it just comes from the statistics from counting, basically. Mm -hmm. So if you have an alignment, you count them many times you see it. You often see tryptophan aligned with tryptophan, but you less, it's more common that the alanine is mutated to something else. But uh, in principle, you can have one sequence. So that doesn't have to be the same. That, that's the reason. Yeah, and then you can have a gap cost here, so you can have like a minus one for the gap. Something often, often you have some cost for the gap. Often you have a cost for the first gap costs more, and then the rest of the gaps are cheaper. So you should have probably have minus 10 there, and then one with the others, and minus 10 here. So then the score here would be something like 30 instead, but it's still higher than 18. Okay, so now the key method to get the optimal alignment is a math, is a programming or computation algorithm that they use in many many methods in bioinformatics and other fields called dynamic programming. So basically, of course, if you want to compare all alignments, all possible alignments, that is a lot of combinations. You can have one gap here, one gap here, so that is like uh, m to the power p possible possibilities. Or well, probably not, but it, it, it's a lot of combinations. So if you really want to find optimal alignment. It's a, what you call an empty complete problem. So it's exponential. So the bigger the alignment, it gets better hard to calculate it. But we can show that we don't need to do that. Because what we can show is that if we start in one corner of this matrix, and we just go through the matrix row by row or column by column, we only need to know the number we want to write here, which is the score, doesn't depend on anything down here only depends on the values of these three positions. So if we so we write the number here, the right here, we take the maximum number that comes from any of these three positions. So either we are alignment or we do a gap in this sequence or a gap in that sequence. So that means that we only have to do one calculation or three calculations for each cell in this matrix. So it takes n times m calculations, which is, I mean, if it's 100, it's like 10,000 calculations times something. So it's not that much. It's absolutely doable. But anyway, today, in a normal computer, it takes in microseconds, I think, for one sequence. We come to, it's still not that cheap, but it's still possible. So you do that, and you have some tricks. Maybe you need to know how long the gaps are, if you have special things for that. But in principle, if you just fill out these matrices, we can calculate the score. So we had an example here, we went through it, started with zeros, and then we put a one over here. We feel the whole, this whole line is one, because you can align this G to anything here, you can never get more than one position correctly aligned. And then you take the next, in this case we went by columns, so we fill out this one, and you see if you go end up here, you can actually have G and A aligned to G and A, so you should have a score, a two. So you have one, and you fill in two in the way that's done. And you keep on filling out here, you see you get three here, because you get G, A, along to G, A, and this I, A, along to this one here. You can keep on filling out the whole thing, and you end up here, and you get a score of six. So the maximum score you can get of this is six. And you can actually trace your way back how you got there by us checking how you got to each position, and you find an alignment that is like that, which is the same as this alignment here. So this means that in 7 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 77 calculations times 3, so I get 200 calculations, I can calculate this alignment. And so, so basically for a simple thing, you can even do it on paper on hand, so like you used to have a lab that you had to do it on hand. I mean, more than 5, 6, six uh, letters you get confused. And, you want to you you want to use these simple scoring functions, but it's even the code you want to write for it is actually very short. So this is some kind of computer code. 
it basically does the alignment. This is some, some kind of assembly language, but it basically you could you could really in your Python program you could actually write the shelf in uh, and if you a simple simple thing you could write the shelf in in, in a yeah, and half a page. If you want to do if you want to find your way back, you need a bit more work. You need to keep on the alignment on the way back. So it's a bit more work. But, and you need to store the map store the path. And there are some tricks you can if you want to do it very fast and so on. But in principle, it's something that anybody can write in half a page of code. Uh, and as I said, we have some social matrices. So this I didn't go through very carefully, but basically the scores will say that you have a score here replacing everything. And basically they come from alignments. So you have an alignment and you somehow count how many times you find an amino acid I replaced by amino acid J. So if you have so if you have an alanine, you, you have your alignment somehow. You count how many times there's so, or perhaps many, many, many alignments. How many times there's an I and alanine here and the tryptophan here? You count that. And uh, you d multiply it by the, multi m m the frequency of i and divide it by the frequencies of the two amino acids together, so the probabilities, and you take a log of this. And then you take the observed frequency between the expected frequencies. And that's, so basically, if it's as random, if it's just as frequent as expected chance, we get zero. If it's, because you take log, if it's more frequent, then you get plus, and if it's less frequent, you get negative numbers. And uh, well, we can skip how you go to this. So basically, this is a couple of matrix. So this is a pan matrix. You can see here, as, as we asked before, that the diagonal here is not, it's all positive, but it's not the same number ever. So the tryptophan is, is 11 in this case, while uh, isolation is only 4. So see, if you see a tryptophan, it's Almost three times as important as aligning tryptophan with another tryptophan, and it's aligning isolucin to isolucin. And you can see aligning isolucin to a leucine is two, or isolucin to a valine is even three. So it's not that, that's a really massive aligning isolucin to a valine or leucine, or, or, or an isolucin. It's almost the same score. But in general, all, all the diagonal numbers here, so all conservation are, are positive, and most of the off diagonal elements are negative. <laughs> but there are some groups there, like the aromats, the hydrophobic ones, and a few numbers here and there that are positive. So there are some replacements that are, in this matrix, are actually giving a positive score. And in the other matrix, this blossom matrix, which was <coughs> obtained in a slightly different way, there was even more groups there. They were, they're, not, they're not the same here. For instance, this group here is, not, is different. So tryptophan in this case is not the replay, it's not positive numbers, the phenyl and the entire thing. So it's slightly different. And then more the positive ones here. So they are, depending on how you do the statistics, you get slightly different alignments. And uh, I think that often nowadays blossom. So the blossom is actually like, so the calculation comes from more distantly related sequences. So that's why it's different. The other one comes from close related sequences, and then you multiply your way through more distant numbers. But it's not it's not a huge difference in performance. But I think that most people use some blossom matrices nowadays. And you can do the same thing for nucleotides, but here you can basically have almost one and minus one and everything is quite okay. But it's the TC or the pyrimidine, 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 or pyrimidine, pyrimidine replacements are slightly less bad than anything else, but it's not that, that, that difference. And I said something about gaps, extension gap costs, but I'll, that's, uh, you will do more in the lab. But in general, you have one cost for opening gap, and then you have a low, lower cost if you want to extend it. And the trick, if you want to do local alignment, is basically you also remember Smith Waterman. Smith and Waterman. Also, that if you have, you do the same thing here, but if you have a negative number, you put a zero. And then you find, so these are the two, two things here. So the global alignment, you find a score of minus five is the best score you find down here. But if you just take these four here, you get a score of 15. So you find this SDRT is here and here, but it's not in the same position. So you can, if you focus on locally, you can just get this alignment. 
and you, it's the same same exact the same uh, uh, matrix except that everywhere there's a zero here is the negative number you put a zero and then of course you keep on the number change later so in this position here you have five otherwise because you have to have all the gaps up here and before so it's it is otherwise the argument is identical Medium yes. would be when do you use the base value lower line uh, as in opposite to a lower line? So,